Hi, everybody. It's Pat Jones. I'm here with another turf zoom from our friends at Aquatrols. And this time we're going to do something a little bit different and talk to, to somebody who's maybe not a, a, a superintendent quite yet, but who's working her way up to it, but has done some really interesting things, I think, to, to help the industry recently. Uh, everybody meet Morgan Creighton. Hi, Morgan. Hi. Morgan, you and I uh, uh, kind of know each other from social media and, and the Twitter and all that kind of stuff. But uh, tell us a little background. Of, uh, how, how did you get into this crazy turf business and, and, and where are you at in the process and what do you hope to do someday with your, your, your turf experience? Awesome. Yeah. So I grew up uh, with a very outdoorsy background. Uh, I grew up where there was no such thing as boy jobs or girl jobs. My dad had three daughters, so we all had to pitch in and help him do everything. So when I was in high school, I originally wanted to be a science teacher. So I enrolled in the Bachelor of Education and I was doing night classes, but in order to afford that, I needed to work. So I worked at a golf course. I worked at Edmonton Golf and Country Club and uh, that's where I started. That's where I fell in love with the industry I was going to these night classes and I'm at work during the day and I realized that I was loving work more than the aspect of sitting inside all day so I've been in this industry for 13 years now and I've worked anywhere from a nine hole public to now I'm at a 45 hole private course and I'm assistant, assistant superintendent, but I'm trying to work my way to become a superintendent. That, that's amazing. And, and was, was there that one moment when you're out on the golf course where you, you saw the deer hopping across the fairway and you saw the sun rise and you had this epiphany? Did you have that? Exactly. It. So Edmonton Country Club, hole number three, it overlooks the river valley towards downtown Edmonton. So every morning when we we would get there with maintenance, you're seeing the sun peek over downtown. Mm -hmm. And it was so awe-inspiring. Like everyone would take that 30 seconds just to watch and look. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, it's like, I can do this. Like I can see this every day of my life <laughs> and not have to be within four walls. Yeah, I, I, I've asked that question probably 2000 superintendents and they all pretty much have that same that same story so but but where your story differs is that you in your kind of spare time we were all aware that the, that the industry is is trying to come to grips with the fact that we need to do a better job of creating opportunities for women but you took it a step further so tell us about the conference that you helped to organize and kind of what prompted that yeah so in 2019, I was one of 50 women to go to Bears inaugural Women in Golf event. And this event was so awe-inspiring. It brought all these women from all different facets of the industry together. And there wasn't a single awkward time. It was like we were in a group of friends that had known each other forever. We were lifting each other up. We were talking about stories. We were getting introduced to each other's families. Like it was it was so much camarader camaraderie all at once. So when I got back, I was like, what can I do to continue this? How can I, how can I work so that students coming into this industry can feel what I felt during those two days? And, and that's where I created Women in Turfgrass Management and its mentor program. So within that, how do I get people together? So it's COVID world, let's do it virtually. Let's get everyone together virtually and talk about some main things that have happened in the year. And, you know, the conference was, it was a full one day session, but I had a speaker who, Marie Thorne, a retired Syngenta, but one of the trailblazers in this industry talking about her successes, her failures, any tidbits going forward. I had Miranda Robinson, who's well known for her talks on mental health going through this year and her struggles and how she deals with everything. And then I had, which I found very interesting, Devin Carroll. Uh, she's a PhD student at the University of Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And she delivered her talk on her research in women in turf. What are some things that you've observed or concluded that we could be changing to do a better job of creating more opportunities for women? So I think one of the biggest things that comes back from surveys that I have sent out is 
the culture at the workplace. It's not necessarily the fact that there are few women. It's the fact that they don't feel valued, that they don't feel that they can express their opinions because of how preconceived notions come across. So if your workplace has a positive culture, you're more likely to get those people that are interested, whether male or female, to want to change and be that and take this to their career. So if you see a female that's starting to show that she likes what she's doing, that she's excelling, take her under your wing, just like you would a guy and show her the ropes, give her, give them a little more of the why. And I I, like, I think that's one of the biggest things is it's not necessarily that you need to differentiate between males and females. Everyone wants to be treated the same, but as long as you have the inclusive, safe culture within your workplace, that's what's going to make females want to stay. Right. So, so do you, do you foresee more of these types of events and more of these kinds of opportunities in the future? What are you, what are you planning for next year? I would like to grow this and start doing golf events and different conferences along with like, so in Canada, the uh, CGSA does have different events around the country. And it would be nice to be able to have a women's sector on that. Uh, I would like to continue to have at least one conference a year, uh, whether that be Zoom or in person will really depend on, again, COVID. But uh, I, I, I just want to see this grow as much as possible to gain a bigger reach so more people can be a part of this community. Last thing, and here's your chance to, to talk to, to other turf heads around the world. What can we do to help you and what can we do to make this problem uh, an opportunity to, to get better in the future? So like I said, the number one thing is workplace culture. If you don't have a positive culture, you're not going to have a positive workforce that is going to be inclusive. So work on your culture, work on your leadership skills. As for me personally, I always need sponsors. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. That's something that will get me to be able to continue to do what I'm doing and grow how I would like to see it go. Um, but yeah, it, it all boils down to culture. Work on what you put out because if you're putting out something negative, you're gonna have negative around you you put out positive you're going to have positive around you morgan thank, thank you so much uh for 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 helping us understand what you're trying to accomplish which is frankly a no-brainer let's let's all get together on this and, and, and thank you for joining me for turf soon and and, and appreciate the, our, our friends from aqua trolls making this possible i hope you have a good day and i look forward to seeing the the conference again next year yeah, thank you very much, Pat. I really appreciate all of your support that you've shown me so far. And this, this was a lot of fun.